Good hi to everybody. Hi, how are we all doing? Welcome to Bravo 22 Live, made possible by the Royal British Legion and the Drive Project. I'm Sally Ann. Some of you will already know me, some of you not yet. Welcome. If you're new today, welcome to our new members. Thank you for joining us. Huge, huge, big welcome. It's really fantastic to be with you all here today. Uh, before we start, I think we have some birthdays. Happy birthday to Captain Tom, 100 years today. Wow, huge achievement. Congratulations. It's an honour to say happy birthday. So now I've been a member of Bravo 22 for quite some time, having found my way here as a military wife. I've completed many, many workshops, both in art and theatre, covering subjects such as masterative figurative drawings, mastering figurative drawings even, printmaking, painting, puppet making, shadow show productions, to mention just some of them, with so much other great stuff going on here too, sculpture making, stage productions, storytelling and much, much more. It truly is a fantastic organisation um, and I would encourage all of your friends and family, your military friends and family, to become involved with us and join in. Bravo 22, our new online programme, is all about creativity, using the arts to keep the mind active and learn new things, and generally having a really good time. So over the last few weeks, with the magic of our, of our new YouTube channel and the wonderful interweb, we have told the story of Romeo and Juliet, practice stand-up comedy, learned how to illustrate comics, and also how to draw figures in perfect proportion. And, and now with so much more, much, much more exciting stuff to follow. So stay tuned in everyone. Today is going to be fun, fun, fun. The programme really is it really, really is, really is all about having fun. So it's about reconnecting with your old friends. It's about making new connections. So please um, spread the word. Please, please spread the word. Encourage your friends and family to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like us on the Facebook page. Uh, click those like button, guys, and ding dong on those bells. Personally, I've never, ever, not once, looked back. Um, the best thing I ever did was become part of the Bravo 22 company. And so... I'm extremely delighted to be able to present to you here on Bravo 22 Live, the wonderful, amazing Al Johnson. Al is a sculptor, a lecturer, and she's our wonderful director of art for Bravo 22. Today, she is going to get us all drawing. So grab your pencils and your paper, get limbered up uh, to have some fun. This time, we're gonna be looking at drawing, how to draw figures in movement. So, Without further ado, please, let's welcome the lovely Al Johnson. Over to you, Al. Thank you, sally Ann. That was a fantastic introduction. Um, and um, welcome to everyone who's watching. Um, so we're going to look at uh, figures in, in movement. Um, we've, we did a, a drawing workshop a couple of weeks ago where we looked at proportions. And sally Ann was fantastic as the as our model she demonstrated lots of proportions for us and and i'm going to ask her today to do the same thing and we're going to get her to doing some some moving um, one of the best ways of of thinking about movement in drawing is to actually move um, if you can to try out these positions because that's a very feeling a position is a very good way of getting it sorted out sorted out into your drawing um, when we looked at proportions, we, we looked, thought about some simple proportions, uh, that there are about seven, seven and a half head lengths in your body length. Uh, we thought about the upper arm and the lower arm being much the same length, um, that the upper leg and the lower leg are much the same length, that the body sort of bends at the pelvis. So that's our kind of halfway mark. Um, so we, we kind of created a proportion diagram and I'm going to refer to that, but, but not everyone would have seen that. So I, I'm not going to go back over that. I'm going to, but I'm going to think about move, how movement, uh, which is an illusion in, in drawing. Uh, it's not real because a drawing doesn't move. It's an illusion of movement. So it's a sense of something having moved without it really doing so. And one of the first ways that that was considered was... Um, the idea of contraposto, counterpoise. Now, very, very, uh, we'll, we'll look at um, our first image. Um, this, these are two very, very ancient Greek sculptures. They're two and a half thousand years old, and they're very static. They're not really moving. They, you don't have a sense that they are going to move. Um, 
I'm going to ask Ali to to just try out something for us. Um, so if you um, stand facing us um, and put your weight on uh, both feet at the same time, um, can you um, can you actually move your one foot off the ground, either foot, without moving your hips? Can you do that? No. If I um, so if I attempt to take my foot off the ground, my hip raises. So no. Okay. That's interesting, isn't it? I, it's, it's almost like your feet are glued to the ground, isn't it? If you don't move your, your the rest of your body, you can't move your foot. Um, so now try and put your weight onto one leg and move your other foot. So can you see that, that leaning, that sort of shift in balance? Um, can, what can you do with that other leg? Can you um, take that off the ground completely, the, the leg you're not balancing on? Can no. you put your toe? Can you... So you need that sort of to keep the balance, yeah. do you? Yeah, yeah. But the weight is on the central leg. Um, whereabouts do you think that foot is in relation to your head? The, 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 the foot you're balanced on? My head is in line with my foot. Or the, the foot your weight is on. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's great, Alien. thank you. Um, so if we look at the Michelangelo image now, that's... Um, a contrapposto image. So um, this is image two, and and the lines have been drawn on to show you how the the, the figure balances. Okay, so what I'm going to do is draw for you um, a way of of um, kind of set te um, sensing this movement. I don't know why I said texting there. Sorry. Okay, I'm using a big fat um, pastel. Uh, so you can see it because it's rather lovely to use. Now, with, with the shoulder line uh, on a contrapposto figure, the shoulder line actually slopes um, in the opposite opposite to the, the balance. Um, so, and the hip line kind of goes in the other direction. So you have the shoulder line going one way and the hip line going the other way. Um, and then the foot, and we remember we um, talked about the foot being in the center. The foot comes right into the center of the body because all the weight is on that foot. And then the other leg can do all sorts of things. It can be, um, if you can balance well, it can, can pirouette, um, but it can just kind of keep your figure stabilized. Um, and also because you've got, your your balance is slightly shifted your arms will be slightly shifted as well so one hand will be higher than the other okay um so if we have a look at um drawing number two um sorry not drawing number two <laughs> we're going to come on to drawing number two um so that's a, a way of looking at um um balance um, and the, the the kind of um, the counterpoise uh, of a contraposto. So if we look at drawing number three, we can see, sorry, <laughs> I'm getting this completely wrong. I've got several sets of numbers. Drawing number one, sorry, sorry, Richard. Drawing number one is the, is the um, contraposto drawing. Um, you can see that on your screen now. Okay. Um, so, I wonder, have we got any questions, sally Ann, so far? We have, we have, we have, yes. Hi to everyone who's joined us from the British Legion today. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in and to all our wonderful members. We have Sharon, Shirley, Matt, Luke, Pa and Baz with us. Hi, guys. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, Al, would you recommend using a crayon for this? Um <laughs> No, I'm using this big fat pastel. It's, these are very, very lovely Sennelio pastels. Um, but I'm really using that just to um, demonstrate so that you can see, because it's very hard to see a, a drawing um, in pencil on, on a screen. Um, normally I would use that for much bigger drawing and it's very sticky and luscious. Um, pencils are, are, um, are very good for drawing. 
the softer the pencil, the better. A 3B pencil is a good, it's a really good one. Um, it's about um, sort of midway in the softness. So anything, uh, the higher the number on a B pencil, the softer the pencil. But two, 3B, 4B, good drawing pencil, keep it sharp. Anything else, Sally? That's all for now, thanks Al. Okay. Um, so, as I said, the, the, one of the best ways of working out positions, um, and I'm sorry about the confusion with my, <laughs> my confusion with my drawings. Uh, we're going to go on to the walking drawing now. The best way to work out a position is to actually do it, to try it out yourself. Um, so, uh, sally Ann, again, once again, I'm going to ask you to, um, this time to move. Um, I want you to give us a profile and to walk towards the wall and then turn around and walk back again. Now, what I want you to do is not look at the upper body so much, but to look at the legs there and to see how that movement is working. Can you see the balance shifts from one foot to the other? Um, Sally, when you come back to the middle, if you can just stop in the middle of the movement. Okay, so can you see there, you've got the front foot is raised because she's in the middle of moving from one, the balance on one leg to the balance on the other. Walking is an incredibly complicated system actually. And, and we, we learn to do it as very young babies, but it's, um, when you, if you try and analyze it, it's quite complicated. Um, so the, the shift, the balance shifts from one foot to the other, and we, we kind of, it's very rhythmic. Can you move on again, sally -Ann, into the next? So if you go into the next movement, so if you stop and then move just to the next part of the movement, can you see she's shifting her weight from one foot to the next foot? Okay, so I'm gonna try drawing that again. Um, thank you, sally -Ann. Um So, I'm going to do again the head. I'll start with the head, although shoulder line is is, a, is an important um, kind of marker for drawings. The, the torso here is not really doing a huge amount, so we're going to just fudge that quite quickly. Um, but then we've got these movements in the leg. And a slight flex, the, the feet are not terribly, um, the, the knees are not, not flexing very much. It's probably a bit um, out of proportion. And when, we, when a walking figure doesn't really um, uh, use the arms very much actually, um, you tend to use the arms much more for running. Okay, so if we can have a look at picture, two which will give you a sort of completed version of that image um, so so you've got the the um the balance pushed forward onto the onto the front leg um and it's coming back from so that the, the the back foot is up you could do this the other way around you could move it slightly forward uh, and go into the next position um, let's have a look at um image three which is a running image. And that's actually much more widely spaced. The legs are much more widely spaced because um, with running, you take bigger steps. Uh, you, um, you're pushing uh, much further forward. Your arms are really uh, being used as a way of um, balancing the body, but also kind of moving forward. Um, we can have a look um, at, um, image two again, and then compare it with image three, you can see that movement between the running and, and the, the walking. So walking is much more sedate, a smaller movement, and then you go into the, the larger movement of running. Um, if you can, if you're drawing somebody running, if you can run, just run, even if it's just in a, the front room, because that will give you a sense of how it feels. Drawing is very much about how you feel as much as it's about how you look. And if you can incorporate that into your, um, 
into your drawing. That's that's fantastic. Um, okay, uh, Sally Ann, any have we got any more questions? Yeah, Al. So I'm sorry, I can't stop laughing. Um, what are you laughing at? Mark from RBL, the lovely Mark, appears yeah. to have drawn an alien. Right, good. <laughs> can't stop laughing. Um, okay. Were you good? Was it meant to be an alien or was it? Uh... I'm not sure. <laughs> Were you good at art in school or did you discover your talents later in life? Um, did I? Sorry, what was the? I couldn't hear the. How, how was art school? Were you good at art school or did you discover your talents later in life? I was good at art school. I was the only good at art school. I was, no, art was the only thing I was any good at at school, oh. um, actually. And um, I went to school where they thought art was all a bit rubbish. So that was unfortunate. <laughs> um, I actually, I realised I'm a sculptor and now and I realised that um, uh, physics and maths are very much connected with um with with what I do now so I, I, if I'd known that then I might have been better at other subjects but I, I liked English and art but art was the was the thing and I was um I was determined to leave school and become an artist my my head teacher um uh, was not impressed by this my intention to go to art school um and she thought it was a stupid idea she actually said that to me in my uh, my last meeting with her stupid idea <laughs> So this shows you shouldn't necessarily listen to teachers. <laughs> oh, exactly. And look at what you're doing now. Fantastic. Um, so I've got a couple of technical questions. Um, how do you account for external influences when drawing figures in movement, such as perhaps fast from a strong wind or striking a football? Well, um, if you're drawing something, uh, it depends. It depends. I mean, it's a, it's a big question. It depends what you're intentions are with the drawing so if you wanted a, a drawing a sort of line drawing like a cartoony kind of drawing you might for for example kicking the football you might kind of add in lines a sort of wind movement lines as it or as you're sweeping the football across but it depends um you know on what kind of drawing you want if you wanted a very technical drawing uh you you would really think about how the, what the musculature was so as the as the football is being kicked, which muscles are coming into play? Uh, what exactly what the balance would be? You'd have to really investigate that, I think, to, you know, watch. You'd have to watch people playing football. Uh, try, you maybe use freeze frames or um, photographs to get a sense of, of um, precisely what that position is before you would start drawing. So it depends a bit on the, the intention of the drawing. And have you ever done any animation drawings? Um, no, I, I haven't. Um, I like drawing much more as a sort of, um, as a kind of expression of emotion rather than a, um, a sort of precise activity. And it, one of my friends is an animator and she says it's very, <laughs> animators are all anal, she says. <laughs> Because it's so it's so precise. I don't know if I'm precise. Not sure I should do this shout out right now, but my, Matt Whiteman, hi. I think that's <laughs> your question. Do you think that was a good moment? Okay, <laughs> let's go back to our drawings. So uh, we've looked at contraposto and we've looked at um, walking and running. So now what I want to do is, is to really kind of look at how you express emotion in, in drawings. That might, might be something that kind of asks, answers some of those questions. Um, so, um, drawing four is a standard standing figure. So it's not really doing a great deal. It's not, not emoting anything very much. It's just standing there. Um, sally Ann, if you can go backwards and, um, and give us a profile, so if you can turn, turn the other way, actually, because then you're the same as the, as the drawings. Um, and feet, sort of feet more or less together. I want you to keep the lower body position the same. So you're not going to um, change that. So from the waist down, you're going to stay as you are. Um, so that's just your standard um, standing position, not doing very much at all. What about if you try to express depression or sadness 
only with your upper body. So that's interesting, isn't it? You So the back is much more bowed and the head is dropped down. In fact, we can't see Sally Ann's lovely face anymore because her hair is drooping. And actually, if you're drawing that, the hair would be really useful to give you a sense of that drooping head. Um, that's fantastic. What about, um, well, let's have a look at the drawing actually. Uh, drawing number five. Um, so that's kind of envisaging that movement, that, that from drawing four, which is quite upright, the legs are the same, but the uh, head is, is bowed, the back is arched as well. Um, we've got lots and lots of joints in the back, the vertebra, um, I think there's 33 vertebra. Um, they can all add to our movement. We've, we, we looked last time at some of the big joints, but the, the back is very expressive. Um, so if we can go back to drawing four, if we can look at drawing four again, and then compare that with drawing five, you'll get, you go from that straight up figure to the much more depressed figure. Um, what about Sally Ann now? Let's let's try and um, let's try and uh, let's try begging for something. <laughs> if you're uh, if you're asking for something, <laughs> so there we got arms out. What about if you're asking someone, you know, maybe a spiritual being? What would you do then? Fantastic. So um, if you're begging or asking, you're, there's this supplication, this idea of the arms out. So drawing six, if we look at drawing six, that gives us that sense of kind of asking or begging and looking up. This, this particular figure is looking up. So and if you can just do that again, um, with looking up. Now try it with looking down. So holding your arms sort of forward but looking down. So then you're, you may be talking to someone who's lower than you. So the position of the head is very important. Um, always think about the relative positions of the head and the arms if you're, if you're working on a standing figure. Um, okay, thank you. Now last, uh, our last uh, emotional response um, is uh, same, same leg position, sally -Ann. Uh, but complete joy. So you're delighted with something. <laughs> now you've got to freeze that because we're doing a drawing. So um, if we were making an animation, that would be perfect. So we're freezing that, arms up. What about if you're looking upwards, uh, throw your head back, then you get a sense of absolute pleasure. Fantastic. That's great. You can't help moving those knees, can you, Sally Ann? That's brilliant. Thank you very much. So let's look at drawing seven. Um, and if we can compare drawing seven to the standing drawing, drawing four, you can see uh, the difference in position there. Um, OK, Sally Ann, any questions? Any, any more questions come in? Have a quick look. How do you control proportions for parts of the figure that are closer to the viewer versus those parts that are not? Example, trailing, trailing a leg in a running figure approaching the viewer. Shall Sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble hearing you. I'll run that by you again. How do you control proportions for parts of the Sorry, figure? Um, I, I, I've lost. Oh, sorry. Carry on. <laughs> Are you there? Are we there? Hiya. Uh, how do you control proportions for parts of the figure that are closer to the viewer versus those parts that are not? Example, trailing leg in a running figure approaching the viewer.
Hello. I, I lost connection there. Sorry. Apologies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's OK. Quick, quickly run that by you again. How do you control proportions for parts of the figure that are close to the viewer versus those parts that are not? Example, trailing the leg in a running figure approaching the viewer. Oh, I see. Right. OK, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I lost um, I lost the um, the sound as as Sally Ann was reading that incredibly com complicated um, question. Not a complicated question, actually. But um, so the proportions. Um, let, let's let's just demonstrate this, actually. Um, so, Sally Ann, if you can <laughs> stand back again um, and. Um, what I want you to try and do, I, I, I've lost, um, I've lost my vision actually, but um, I'm hoping Sally Ann can try this. Um, if you can, if you are standing facing the viewer, so if you face us, Sally Ann, um, and then um, if you hold out your arm sideways first, we do this with an arm. If you hold your arm out sideways. I've seen. Hi. <laughs> right. I keep losing you. Okay. Hold yeah. your arm, arm out sideways. And then if you bring that arm forward, so it's pointing directly at us, can you see there that you've got, uh, you've gone from uh, an understanding of the arm uh, at, at its real length to a kind of very foreshortened view and that's that process is called foreshortening um it's where and you draw what you actually see it's quite tricky to do because we we always try and um draw what we know is there um i'll i'll i think it's a good question and i think i'll do um we'll try and do a session on foreshortening but it's yeah. it's quite difficult to do online because it's it's difficult to see but thank you very much <laughs> sally -Ann. any more questions you want to dash back well, i've got a question here i'm not sure i should ask it a request for it now if i'm looking closely it looks like a lap I've, dance um, wrong but it's a tap dance from sally uh please from angela at the legion um she found this really therapeutic i actually can tap dance i actually can i can still remember it from being a child um really so, happy um, to sit down and do one thing so thank you I didn't. I didn't hear the question. Sorry. Oh, did you get an A in art? Control Al. proportions. I can't. I didn't hear the question. Al, did you get an sorry, A? Sorry, I didn't. Didn't hear the question. Yeah. You did. Did you get did an I A? Get... Did you get an A in that... art? Yes. <laughs> I did. After not. After getting very very sad results in every other subject. Um, thank you very much. I'm sorry. There's been some technical uh, problems. Um, this is the first time it's happened. Very frustrating. First time it's happened for me anyway. But um, I hope it hasn't spoilt your um, your morning. Um, uh, spoilt, spoilt this this um, presentation. Um, so the challenge, uh, this week's challenge is to um, make a line drawing of yourself expressing uh, body, some body language. So um, we've had some fantastic drawings sent in so far. Um, Please keep them coming. It's really fantastic to see them because we we know that you're enjoying the sessions. So please, please um, carry on sending them in. So a, a drawing expressing yourself, um, ex uh, showing an idea using body language. Um, thank you very much for watching. Apologies again for technical issues. I suppose this is going to happen with with online presentations, um, but my apologies. Um, I'm going to hand you back to Sally Ann. Thank you very much, Sally Ann, for being such a fantastic model once more. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks, Al. That was absolutely wonderful. Huge, huge thanks. I'm sure you'll all agree that was an absolutely fantastic experience. Um, yeah, we hope you've all enjoyed watching. Don't forget to tell all your friends and family to subscribe. Hit the like buttons, click those like buttons, ding dong on those bells and watch out for our updates on our Facebook page. Don't forget to send in your pictures of this week's challenges. We really love to see them. Let's see more of them. Um, also, please, guys and girlies, we appreciate all your feedback. So if you could just click on the survey link below and tell us what you think and any suggestions you might have for future sessions, they're all very welcome. Or simply, if you just want to query becoming a Bravo 2-2 member. 
will more than welcome you. Um, we're going to be back again on Tuesday with the lovely, I'm just checking, Susan Harrison with a comedy improv presented by the wonderful Dean Williams. And of course, Thursday, we'll be back again with the amazing Adam Cartin, who will be bringing Puppetry to Life. Wow. Uh, presented by the gorgeous Lorraine Smith. Uh, we can't wait to see you all again soon. Cheerio, everyone, from all of us at Bravo 22. Sending you all our love and hugs, giving you some hugs. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. <laughs>